Uh, well, today's topic, as I sh started sharing the screen with you, it is related with um, the topic is um, it is um, uh, it's twelfth lecture, and the title is translation and gender. So before I begin with uh, my simple question is that you are all familiar with what gender is. What would be gender? Translation and gender. So just make a guess. Is me kya hoga hona chahiye? This topic me kya ana chahiye? Translation and gender. Just make a guess. Because now we are talking about translation and culture, which we have started. So, in that, we have these sub-topics. So, translation and gender. What would it, do you think would be? You are all familiar with what is gender, class? Come on. What is gender? Gender. You have studied literature. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, what is gender? Where it is the difference between the sexes like men and female? Okay, fine. Or literally uh, writings by both men and women and women or male or female or something. Or the so basically when we talk about translation and gender, although so far different theorists have come up, we moved from so much you know from starting from initial translation, word to word translation to to sense for sense translation. And other types of, and moving on to other issues and translation, and then initially it was always linguistic sort of a translation, which means language ka zada uh, focus tha. But uh, uh, now other issues have come come up in terms of translation and culture, which is the main topic. This can be subdivision translation and gender. Hai. Here in this topic, basically we're going to study how you know female gender, the role of their uh, participation, their role in terms of contribution to translation studies or translation studies in particular their role in bringing up particular theory or 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 kya, kya uh, in fact contribution in our translation making uh, concrete examples in what they have done and what they participated in that okay so let's see what translation and gender is the interest of cultural studies in translation has inevitably taken translation uh, studies away from the purely linguistic analysis and brought it into contact with other disciplines. So the very, as I said, the very broader topic on translation and cultural studies has brought into translation other topics related in translation studies related from pure, uh, somebody wants to join, from purely linguistic analysis, though initially we started, we are moving on to other disciplines and how other disciplines are kind of being in included in this broad uh, um, discipline of translation studies and then it has become more or less interdisciplinary what do you mean by interdisciplinary that how other different disciplines are being merged into translation studies this has become more like a hybridization something which is hybrid is a combination it's it's, it's a combination of two or more things when anything we talk about it's hybrid that means us may there it's a blend i should say blend is the right word the blend of two or three or something the same is the case with translations studies as well that this is a process of disciplinary hybridization that means a combination a blend of and it's uh, you know different disciplines and in this context we are basically trace out and find out that what sherry seaman how she criticizes translation studies for often using the term culture as if it is referred to as a pro, as obvious and unproblematic but how uh, in particular it talks about that how culture is referred to and how it is uh, you know reflects the reality in particular in her work gender in translation cultural identity and the politics of translation which was published in 1996 so Seaman, um, Sherry Seaman, in her uh, seminal work, Gender in Translation and Cultural Identity and the Politics of Translation, which was, uh, you know, published in 1996, she approaches basically translation from a very, very gender studies angle. That means, in particular, naturally, she herself being a female, her approach is in terms of that what is the role of females, what is the role of fem female, uh, you know, or, you know, female... Um, translation translators or or their contribution in the ter in terms of critique or in terms of their contributions to 
translation studies as it is it is said so the role of the the feminine writers the female writers so she approaches translation from a very very gender studies angle and she sees the language of sexism in translation study with its images of dominance fidelity faithfulness and betrayal as she moves on she says that within the within language and within translation studies what's the role of different sexes male and female how they present the images of dominance and when we talk about the role of male translations translators or female how they their role in translation their contribution translation study and how they if it is a female translator how she talks about the role of how you know the women being um, you know in terms of how they are betrayed or pay or, or in otherwise and if it when we talks about male uh, translators it would be in terms of the dominance the way their roles in society are in general so the dominance roles the fidelity faithfulness and betrayal how it is reflected in the works as well so it is said the typical uh, if you look in this scenario how translation study um, is evolving you see it's a basically we talk about the 17th century translation works which are being translated in particular the image of less belles in fidels uh, you know the, the translations which were translated into french and then they were basically artistically all those these translations were artistically beautiful but they were uh, you know uh, but they were unfaithful so it says that when we talk about uh, you know this the, the concrete images of 17th century translations of trans, translations into french and we see that how all the the work in itself was beautiful but it reflected an aura of unfaithfulness so similarly other female theorists they also when we talk about how do they reflect on translation studies and what do they look uh, at is so the the feminine theorists basically uh, uh, they see a kind of a parallel between the status of translation which is often considered to be derivative and inferior to original writing so um, like uh, the the feminist writers or the feminist translation uh, translation translators i should say or theorists both uh, when they uh, look at this work they have a very different perspective what is the different perspective because they kind of draw a parallel between the status of translation studies or translation as a genre of literature and they see that how it find its parallels to uh, you know the role of women the role of women and what's the parallel they see because the the way status the status of translation is always considered kind of inferior to original writing you know every everybody you see whenever you look up at a in a source text written by the source writer that is always considered superior than the translation which is carried on no matter whoever has carried on a very big name in translation as well but it is always considered that source text is superior and the translated text is inferior ye kism ka ek status mein farak hai so the status of translation is also considered it is considered derivative by derivative it means that it is derived from something they feel that maybe translation and uh, the translation is not a creative work because it is basically a derivative it is derived from an original source text which was written by the by the by a source author okay similarly uh, feminine theorists feel the same is the status of women because they say that women actually if you look at society they are always uh, uh, lie in a marginalized society they are always repressed in the society um, and same is the way they are reflected in literature as well because the way they are marginalized in society their 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 role in society is reflected in creative work in creative and literature and all that so this this is the parallel between the role of women in society and the role of translator or translation or the translated product which is which comes up because we always see that the translated version somebody wants to join is always inferior to the source text and same is the role of female or a uh, uh, women who are always considered as a as a lower at a at a lower uh, uh, you know ladder and their role is always considered as as kind of inferior to the male writers okay 
so uh, from here let me some uh, read something about um, you know from translation and gender studies by the way these exact notes for these lecture 12 and uh, like next lecture they are uploaded on your lms and google and google classroom usme aapke kuch handouts upload uh, you can revisit them you can have a look at them so at the moment i'm just going to read some more details about from these handouts which are with you you can look them later look at them later on okay so uh, um, you know the female theorists they see the parallel which i've just read out between uh, uh, between the status of translation which is often considered to be derivative and inferior to original writing and that of women so often repressed in society and literature as i said the way they are marginalized and this is the core of feminist translation so this according to this female the uh, theorist they feel that this is the core of feminist feminist translation theory the way a uh, female writer or translators contributed in the domain of translation studies and translation theory we give them the title as the feminist translation theory so they always seek to identify uh, and and critique the tangle of concepts which relegates both women and translation to the bottom of the social and literary this is the way a translation study is relegated to a to a lower level liter in the in the literary ladder may they are always placed at a lower level same is the case the female how they are relegated into the bottom in the lower ladder in a social strata or a social society or in a society or in a social setup women always have a have a place at a lower ladder and similarly translation as it is it is always considered to be at a lower literary ladder why because they say it's always a derivative it's not original work ye to kisi ke kaam ko aapne translate kiya what is something uh, you know so commendable about it it is basically it's actual this was the trans the source text is ko aapne translate kiya so this is how the how the feminist translation theory draws a parallel between these two concepts okay i hope it's clear to you so uh semen takes this further to the concept of um uh, committed translation projects and i'll read out and she says for feminist translation fidelity is to be directed towards neither the author nor the reader but towards the writing project a project in which in which both writer and translator participates so semen uh, gives uh, gives the example of canadian and in particular she gives the example of canadian feminist translators from quebec who seek to emphasize their identity and ideological stance in translation project and in this a very famous name in, is of barbara uh, goddard uh, is a famous theorist and translator in this domain and she is very very certain about manipulation which involved and she this is how she um, she gives her views or she uh, projects her, uh, her views in this way and i will quote it for you the feminist translator affirming her critical difference her delight in interminable rereading and rewriting flaunts the signs of her manipulation of the text so this is in particular early uh, in this context she says the role of the feminist writers the female writers they, they basically affirm the critical difference between them and how they delight in this particular interminable rereading and rewriting and they basically show the sign of manipulation of the text how the text is manipulated changed accordingly and similarly she simon also quotes the introduction to the translation of lisa govens a book by another committed feminist translator whose name is suzanne d harward and uh, the later explains her translation strategy in political terms she explains in particular susan harvard she explains her translation strategy in the following words and i'm going to read out for you she says my translation practice is a political activity aimed at making language speak for women so my signature on a translation means this translation has used every translation strategy to make feminine visible in language So, so Susan um, Howard basically explains. She says in these words, she says that the translation practice, according to her, it's a, it's a kind of a political activity. Um, why? Because she says that women translators or 
in particular the feminist translators, when they write something in particular, giving her own example, she says, I take it as a very, very, uh, she's talking about herself, that she takes it as a very political stance. And she says she lets the language speak for women. By language speak for women is that as a translator, she says that the women uh, use this language as a tool, as a tool to talk about themselves, their status, uh, of how they are reflected in literature. So uh, in particular, Howard says that when she translates, she uses language as a tool to speak of women's st st uh, strata or position or status. And she says that for her signature, uh, her own signature on a translation means that this translation has used every translation strategy to make feminine visible in the language. So because when she says that she takes translation studies, feminine translations a bit step further, taking into the political connotations and take it as a political activity, she says that this is like, if she's translating something, it will carry her signature. And for her, translation always means that whatever the way she's using, whatever strategy she's using for translate, it makes this particular aspect very, very visible feminine, visible in the language, and in the heard language, the language which she used for translation is a visible reflection of the way she feels how women um, in society are, the, how it is reflected in their in creative writing, and for that matter, how even when they are translating, this is a kind of a tool, like they use you to, your language as a tool to reflect uh, this aspect of uh, the theory, okay? So one such strategy is discussed by Seaman is the treatment of linguistic markers of gender. She says that when they are translating in particular, the treatment of linguistic markers, when they tend to use a, a particular gender, female gender in particular. And she gives example of that uh, for the word one, which is used, the word E is used um, to emphasize the feminine. Similarly, in the word human rights, human rights, she capitalizes M for man in the word human, just to show the implicit of sexism or to show that how even within when we talk of human rights, it actually means man's rights, okay? When she capitalizes man within human, she says that there is more, some, there's always this reflection that man's rights are more important. So in, in the capitalization of M in human, Rights to show the implicit sexism, the new legism author, or to translate uh, into the language. So similarly, it says that uh, French writers were translating, they were using female personifications of nouns with English pronouns, and other translations were being carried on. So uh, in particular, Seaman, she kind of brings an overview of what was the contribution of women translators. And according to her, she feels that women translators have done an immense job in the domain of contribution studies. They have, uh, you know, not only made uh, translations in literature, it is also in history. They discuss the distortion, um, um, in particular, in the translation of French feminist theory, and they look at feminist translation. So it says that when they look at this, they see that how translation has been conducted as as i said it brings an overview of female role of women translators that how within this domain they have done a lot of work they have translated um, not only literature in history and then they, they personally feel that somehow they have been distorted as well when we talk about french feminist theory when they look at you know uh, you know how they are marginalized and among the his studies are the sum summaries of key literary translation works carried out by women in the first of, uh, half of 20th century. So Seaman says that if you have an overview, if you look at the way the key literary translations carried out by women in the first half of the, of the 20th century, that is uh, a great work, it's immense. And then um, she brings uh, forth this information that um, great, uh, so much so that the great classics of Russian literature, which were initially made available in English, were basically translations, which were produced mainly by women. So he said, this is a great work. According to her, she brings forth, she reveals that, uh, you know, very great works. Russia in itself boasts of great creative writing, boasts of its literature, great works written by those, uh, those 
and Tolstoy and Dostoevsky and Chekhov and Gobol. And when we talk about these work, these they were actually translated from Russian uh, literature into English by female writers. You know, uh, you know. Initially, this work was done uh, uh, by Constance Garnett, who translated these works of Tolstoy and Dostoevsky and Chekhov. And it comprised, it was a big work, long work, comprising of 60 volumes, not one volume or two volume. You can just see it comprised of 60 volumes of translations translated like they were the entire works. You know, it was not like one work or so. If we were to say that you're all familiar with what big name Shakespeare has in English literature. If somebody comes and translates the entire works of Shakespeare, Uski jitni bhi plays into French language or Spanish language or Urdu language for that matter. That would be a great work, big work. Similarly, Russian, uh, the classics literature, I just go translate kiya gya. Tolstoy or Dostoevsky or Chekhov or, Go or Gobol, Gobol's go translate kiya gya into English. That happened to be a female, a woman, Constance Garnett. So she got uh, all the credit for uh, translating these 60 big volumes of German of, I'm sorry, of these Russian literature works being translated. And similarly, she says that other works of literature which were translated included some works in German language as well, who were actually works in literature who were written in German, but they were translated uh, into, you know, other languages. They were translated again by women translators. Uh, prominent in these are the names of Jean Starr, and then Villa Moore with her husband, they were all big names who were translating them into English. So um, we carry on and we say that the important role played by women translators up to the present is, is emphasized by Siemens' reference to the feminines, uh, Jim Levin and um, other writers. And in contrast to self-effacing work, some of the earlier translators mentioned above, we talk about Levin's work and in creating a new work, which is discussed, and from the feminist perspective, power is not really um, only Levin's self-confidence, but also, you know, Levin in particular talks about that how there's a concept of betrayal, translating a male discourse that speaks of a woman's wit. He says that sometimes you say that actual source text written by a male, or male discourse that speaks of women being betrayed and how it is translated, and that somehow fascinated semen, and she hints that the possible ways that when she wrote that particular work, it was kind of like uh, like it was redetermined and it was like manipulated, changed, and you know because it had to be done uh, uh, because it was part of a feminist project, so it had to 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 present this particular aspect in that translation. Okay, then uh, we move on and we say that how Seaman uh, focuses centers on underlining the importance of the, the word cultural turn. For her, the term cultural turn or word is very important. And in cl conclusion to her book, she insisted how the contemporary feminist translation has made gender aside. He says that the gender studies and how translation studies moves on in this trajectory. Conclusion of the book, she says that contemporary feminist translation has made gender a very, very important site of consciously transformative project just made they have brought forth the kind of a uh, you know trans uh, project in which he reframes conditions of textual authority, uh, you know, uh, with this perspective that uh, how uh, uh, translate translation reframes presents uh, the, the how it is presented in the translated version, and then she summarizes the contribution in terms of cultural studies to translation as follows, and she says, and I will just quote, she says. Cultural studies brings to translation and understanding of the complexities of gender. She says that it brings forth an understanding of the complexities of gender and culture, how these are two related, gender and culture, how they are related. And it allows us to, to situate in particular linguistic, uh, linguistic transfer within the multiple post realities. And he says that how linguistically we talk about, you know, how it allows us to situate or to bring linguistic transfer, you know, up uh, uh, as 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 a as a talk that how these different trajectories of translation moved on. It moves on from linguistic transfer within the multiple post realities, and we talk about other disciplines of say like post structuralism, 
then post colonialism hai and then post modernism all these different domains how this uh, how in literary studies that these things were evolving same has its impact on translation studies as well to so simen uh, she links gender and cultural uh, studies to the development in post colonialism and she links up and she brings up to the next uh, topic which we will be covering in the next class would be post colonialism and and she how she links up that cultural studies how it moved on um, with this aspect gender studies and how gender and cultural stu- studies move on to the next area which will be post colonialism which we are inshallah doing in the next class so the exact s- uh, scope of post colonialism is open to some people they debate it and they link up how the cover how the reflect of its reflection of history of former colonial studies of powerful european empires resistance to colonialist powers and how the effect of imbalance kind of of power relations between colonizers how we look at that more broadly see how the effect of imbalance of power relationships between the colonized and the colonizer how it is reflected in that okay this particular when we talk about post colonial uh, studies it's a relationship how the former colonizers they colonized uh, the different um, the different regions of the world and the relationship between the between the colonizers and the colonizer would be the british colonized in our context who so colonized the indian subcontinent and colonized were the, the 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 general public in the indian subcontinent who were colonized at that point of history okay so this is again a very important another type of relationships because you when it, it has its impact on translation studies as well that see that the same uh, uh, thing uh, extract or even history for that matter when it would be translated by the people who were colonized or the colonized will have a different perspective and if it was to be translated from the perspective of colonizers who were the colonial masters unka perspective totally different hoga when they were to do involved in this particular type of translation so the concept the consequent crossover between different contemporary disciplines can be seen by the fact that essays he says that we'll see that's very interesting that how different disciplines interdisciplines they have a crossover there there's a kind of hybridity they are you know uh, 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 should i say reflection of one discipline on another and the and the theorist as well is an important field and we look at the collection of post colonial writings and how seamen herself with give references to post colonial writers the in particular spivak and similarly how spivak talks about in particular roles of seamen and others okay uh, so class uh, so with this we have come to the end of today's lecture translation and gender and uh, this was a part of the broad topic for, uh, you know translation and cultural studies um, and we are going to look up uh, to the next aspect which is related to the post colonial theory in the next class this week so with this i've come to the end of today's topic if you have any questions you are open it's open now for questions you can all come up uh, for the questions because then i am going to talk a little bit in much detail about uh, the your project uh, the, the assignment which i have given okay class.